Hi. This is a seventh tutorial in the series about brushes. If you missed the earlier ones, there are some links in the description of this video. We're using CS4 right now because brushes changed some in CS5. We'll go over that in some of the other movies. Start by opening the brushes panel. You can do that by clicking on this icon, or if you don't happen to have it, you can go to Window, Brushes, or just tap F5 on your keyboard to open the panel. For now, if you want to follow along, I'm using a regular round brush with a diameter of 28 pixels, a hardness of 100%, and a spacing of 28%. That's fairly large for the spacing, but you'll see why I'm doing that soon. Now, the only part of this upper menu that we haven't covered is Other Dynamics down here. By the way, if you're using CS5 or above, Other Dynamics is gone, and you'll find these things under Transfer. So we're going to click on Other Dynamics to enable it and to open the panel. Here we have the very same kind of sliders and control menus that we've seen in most of these dialogues. But this time they are controlling opacity and flow. In order to really understand that, we have to know what opacity and flow are, because they can look a bit similar. Both of them will cause the brush dabs to fade, but they do so in very different ways. To get an idea, let's turn other dynamics off for now by clicking in this little box, and go up here to the Options bar at the top of the window. We'll examine this bar in more detail in another movie, but for now we're just going to look at these two controls, Opacity and Flow. Opacity controls the amount of opacity in the entire stroke. We can set the opacity to 17 by just typing 17 on the keyboard. If that doesn't work for you, you might have to use the keys at the top of the keyboard, not the number pad. This makes the entire stroke 17% opaque, just like this. You can draw back over the stroke, and it does not increase the opacity. If you pick up the pen, or if you let go of the mouse button, and you start another stroke, then where the two strokes overlap, you will get a buildup. And the more strokes you make, the more buildup you get, until it becomes pretty much opaque, but you have to keep making more strokes for that. That's opacity. We're going to set that back to 100% by tapping 0, and we'll take a look at flow. Flow determines the rate at which color is applied as you move the brush, and it does it dab by dab. So if we change the flow to 17% by holding down the Shift key and typing 17, then, as you can see, when you overlap the stroke, it starts building up right away. And if you add more strokes, it builds up more and more and more and more and more, and gets to a completely opaque fairly quickly. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here by holding down the command key and the spacebar. That's control spacebar on a PC. And then I'm just going to click where I want the zoom and hold for a second till I've zoomed in some. And now you can see that every single dab builds up. We'll go to the top here so you can see the first one. Each dab overlaps its neighbors and every place it overlaps it gives you some buildup. So I'm going to zoom back out by using Option Command and tapping 0, that's Control Alt 0 on a PC, to get back to 100%. And I want you to notice too that for similar levels of opacity or flow, the flow looks a lot darker. And that's because of the dab by dab buildup. If I make just a single dab over here by the opacity stroke, you can see that a single dab is the same. It's only when you start adding dabs that the flow builds up and it starts to look darker. So, now that we know all of that, let's change the flow back to 100% by holding down the Shift key and tapping 0. And then I'm going to select all of this with Command A and just delete. That's Control A on a PC, of course, and still the Delete key. And then I'm going to drop the selection with Command D or Control D on a PC so that we have an empty layer to play with again. So, let's go back here now to Other Dynamics and enable them by just clicking in the checkbox there. This is where you can control the opacity and the flow dynamically as you're working. The controls are the same as they are in the rest of these menus, but you can't set the minimum. That is always zero, completely transparent. The maximum, of course, is controlled over here with the opacity and flow from the options bar that we were just looking at. Jitter changes the opacity dab by dab, and if we turn the control off, then the jitter changes everything, and you can see down here, or I'll make a stroke for you, it's just all over the place. So um, I'm going to undo that with Command Z. That's Control Z on a PC. We'll change the opacity back to nothing for now. And let's take a look at some of the rest of these. Fade goes from the maximum opacity that you have set up here to 
utterly transparent in the number of dabs that you have set in this text field just to the right of the control. So it says control fade 30. That means it takes 30 dabs to go from full opacity to nothing. If I change that number to 50, which I can do by just typing, then it will go from maximum opacity to total transparency in 50 brush dabs. So as I work, it fades out in the same number of dabs for every stroke, no matter what else I do. So I'm going to undo that with Command Z and then step backwards through the undo by holding down the Option key and tapping Command Z a couple more times. That, of course, is Control Z on a PC or Alt Control Z to step backwards through your undos. The next one is pen pressure, and this is really intuitive. It works exactly the way you would expect. The less pressure you have, the less opacity. The more pressure you have, the more opacity. And it's really easy to control and really easy to move and just really nice. Well, you won't have any trouble with that one. I'm going to use the history this time to go back to before I made that stroke. Pen tilt makes an opaque stroke if the pen is perpendicular to the tablet and the more the pen is parallel to the tablet, the more the stroke fades out until it gets down to nothing. We'll undo that one too. The stylus wheel works pretty much the way that an airbrush would. So if the wheel on the stylus is pushed far away from you, the way that it would be closed in a regular airbrush, you have no opacity, and as you pull it back, you get more opacity until you have total opacity, and then you can push it back the other direction to fade back out again. So if you're used to using a real airbrush, your airbrush reflexes will still work. And I'm going to undo that. And let's take another look at jitter. If we set the control here to pen pressure and we give it a nice big jitter, you'll be able to see that the two things are combined. All of the brush controls work this way. Everything modulates all the rest. So with both jitter and pen pressure, the opacity of any one brush dab will never be higher than the opacity set by the pressure. It can be quite a bit lower all the way down to transparent, but it will never be higher. So that's opacity, and I'm going to undo both of those. The flow controls work exactly the same way, but they regulate flow, not opacity. So let's turn this off and set the opacity jitter back to nothing, and that will remove any opacity variance so we can take a look at flow. Um, Jitter jitters the flow of the brush dabs. Since each brush dab builds up with its neighbors, this tends to look darker overall than the opacity jitter. Undo that. Fade fades the flow from totally opaque to totally transparent in that many steps, or not necessarily totally opaque, whatever you have set up here for your opacity in that many steps. So right now it will fade in 30, and I still have a jitter, let's turn that off. So right now it will fade in 30. 30 brush dabs. Once again, you have the brush dabs building up, so it will look generally darker. And we'll make those go away. Pen pressure, once again, works the same way. And once again, because we're using flow, you have the characteristic flow brush dab buildup stuff going on. Undo that. Pen tilt. And perpendicular, and then tilted. And finally we have the stylus wheel once again, which decreases the flow as the wheel is pushed forward and increases it as it's pulled back. Just like that. So that's flow. Of course you can use both opacity and flow to get other effects, and it's all interactive like always, but I'm going to leave you to experiment with all of that on your own, because we are out of time. Next time we'll take a look at the things below the line, down here. Until then, this has been Robin Wood, and I hope you found this helpful.